There's lots of ways to create a mini wetland in your garden, but this one's really simple. By using a container, you don't even have to dig a hole. So if you've got a yard, a hard surface, or just a small garden, and you want to attract wildlife, I'm going to show you how you can do that in just an hour or two. Today, I'm using an old barrel I got off eBay, but you could use anything that holds water. An old sink? You might have one in the garden, just waiting to be used. These garden trugs, the handles break, you could reuse that, cut it down if you want. I'm sure you've got something like this under the bed. An old bucket or a new one for 99p. Or even a sight hat, they go out of date and can't be used, but if it holds water, it could be a pond. Here I've got everything we need to make a mini wetland. I've got my container, I found this old barrel on eBay for just over 20 pounds. I've got some aquatic compost. This is special clay compost. I've got the plants, which are the most important thing. These little pots cost about five or six quid each, and they're all native plants. I've got some gravel, three pounds a bag. You're only gonna use a small amount. I've got some house bricks. These ones with holes are great because Bugs can creep into the little holes and they'll be a habitat in themselves. These are used to prop up plants to the right height in the water. I've got some nice rocks, which I just found in the garden. I've got some logs. This is really good stuff. And we're gonna use these to create ramps and provide more habitat for all the wildlife that we're gonna attract into this pond. These baskets are special baskets, which you can use for pond plants. They've got holes in them. And so they allow the water in and they allow the roots to expand out and feed. They're less than a pound each. You can get different shapes. These are good for a barrel because they fit around the side. You could use any container and make holes in it. You could even use an old hanging basket just lined with a bit of hessian or felt or a bit of old t-shirt. I've found a spot here that's just crying out for a mini pond and it's just the right size for my barrel. It's next to an old water butt, which is collecting rainwater, which I can use in the pond. It's the best sort of water to fill a pond with. And it's shaded for part of the day. So it gets sun, but it also gets a little bit of shade and that's perfect for attracting wildlife. Plus it's got so much habitat, other plants and things around it and a little bit of a step at the back that we're gonna use later on. So now I'm going to plant up the plants in the baskets, which I showed you earlier. I'm gonna use this aquatic compost. This is, this is a secret weapon for pond planting because it's really, really heavy and it won't float around in the pond like lighter compost will, or even garden soil, which is not really the best thing. It's also not too rich. And with a pond, you don't want a lot of nitrogen. You don't want a lot of fertility. Otherwise you get algal blooms, that green water that probably we're all familiar with in the summer. I'm just gonna wash my gravel because even though it looks clean, you'll be amazed how much clay there is clinging to this and of course when I put it in the pond that's all gonna make the water go really milky so if you see you see the color of the water coming out of that it's getting cleaner now but there's a lot of clay there and it helps to uh, keep the soil in place when we lower it into the pond. It also provides lots of little niches for animals to lay their eggs in. Some animals need these different habitats. The more different types of plant and habitat we can introduce, the wider range of animals will be happier there. So that's all ready to lower into the pond now. Mm. 
Now I'm going to fill our pond with water. Rainwater is the best type of water to use. If you've got a water butt, use the water to fill the pond. If you haven't, it's not the end of the world. Tap water has chlorine and nutrients in it, but it will eventually clear. The chlorine will evaporate away and plants will use the nitrogen which is in tap water. I've got some rainwater here, so I'm going to use it. What we're trying to do here is fill it without disturbing the soil, which will make the water all cloudy. So if you're filling with a hose, just rest it on a stone or place it so that it doesn't disturb the soil in the plants. Now the pond's full, I'm going to just put a few extra features in to help wildlife. We need something to provide a flat surface that is just out of the water, which will be great for frogs or newts to haul out onto. And also it allows birds to fly down and have a drink. You may need to adjust things when the water level settles. I think this one is going to go down a couple of inches and they'll probably be about right, but I'll be looking at it every day. I'm going to put a ramp. This is really quite important. So I've got this nice bit of wood here, which is going to provide a ramp up to the pond because a pond in a container is by definition out of the ground. Amphibians, frogs, toads, newts, etc. They need to be able to get in and out of the water. They don't live in the pond year round. They lay their eggs there and you see frog spawn and tadpoles in the water, but then they come out of the water and they very often hibernate in damp grassland somewhere else and return in spring. And finally, I want a nice log to provide a perch. So if any birds come down here, they can perch on that look around before having a quick bath. And I think that's just perfect now. So here we have it, a mini wetland in a barrel. I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I've enjoyed making it. It was really quick to do, but it's gonna attract wildlife for many years to come. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments box below.